Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Painful Death of the Unburied Queen In a previous video, we have looked at the horrific story of a medieval queen's remains and how they were treated terribly following her death. Catherine of Valois was left unburied for around 400 years inside of Westminster Abbey, and her remains would be visited and tampered with throughout the centuries. Samuel Pepys would even write how, on Shrove Tuesday 1669, I to the Abbey went, and by favour did see the body of Queen Catherine of Valois, and had the upper part of the body in my hands, and I did kiss her mouth, reflecting upon it, I did kiss a queen, and this my birthday, and I thirty-six years old, and I did kiss a queen. So during the 17th century, it was believed acceptable to kiss the remains and body of a queen that died years before. She remained inside of Westminster Abbey until she was finally entombed and reinterred during the reign of Queen Victoria. But on the 3rd of January 1437, Catherine died unexpectedly following childbirth. But what is the story of the unburied queen's actual death and what happened? Catherine of Valois was a controversial queen during the medieval period. She became a queen following her marriage to Henry V, the warring king of England who won a spectacular battle at Agincourt. She was said to have been very attractive, and through marriage Catherine and Henry united England and France during the One Hundred Years' War. She was crowned queen at Westminster Abbey on the 23rd of February 1421, but would only reign for another year in power. Henry, her husband, was away in France continuing his military campaigns and Catherine would be pregnant and she gave birth to the heir to the throne and the next king, Henry VI. Her husband would never see his successor as he became sick and died on the 31st of August 1422 and Catherine was left a widow at the age of around 20. She was now a queen dowager and the queen mother, and she doted and cared for her son during his childhood. But she then spectacularly married a man who was considered way below her station in life. Catherine was still young, and many in England wanted to take her hand in marriage, as they would be the stepfather to the king, and with this would be incredibly powerful, as Henry VI was just a boy. There were rumours about Catherine and marriage, including that she planned to marry her late husband's cousin, Edmund Beaufort, but many in Parliament were against the match. But at the time, it's believed she had a sexual encounter and relationship with Owen Tudor, who had previously caught her eye. Tudor was a Welshman who had been in the service of Henry V's steward, and he was then appointed the keeper of Catherine's household or wardrobe. This gave Owen Tudor intimate access and time with the Queen, and it's believed their relationship flourished following the King's death. Catherine was living at Windsor Castle, and this is where their relationship began, and she then became pregnant with her first child with Owen. There was a point in time where she left the King's household and Parliament would later grant Owen Tudor the rights of an Englishman, giving him a slightly better standing, allowing him to do more things but it's not known when Catherine of Valois and Owen Tudor married, or where they were married. This leads to speculation later that any children produced by the couple could have been considered illegitimate, as the Tudor dynasty would later seize England when Henry VII came onto the throne and the grandson of Owen Tudor. If Catherine and Owen were not married, this could have made Henry illegitimate. The couple must have married at some point, as their lawful marriage would have added stronger royal ties to the Tudor claims to the throne, and together the pair would have six children at least. Edmund Tudor became the father of Henry VII, and Jasper Tudor became an uncle to the king, who was seen as a brilliant military commander. But let's remember that despite all of this, Catherine was a queen dowager, and she was a widowed queen. This was still an important royal position, and despite not having any rights to succeed Henry V as a reigning and ruling monarch, she still benefited from power and influence at court. She still enjoyed the title of queen and the life as a queen, but as a dowager and a queen mother, she was seen as powerful. Towards the end of her life, it's believed she was afflicted with an illness or problem with her health. A few months before she died, she was inside of Bermondsey Abbey and she spent some time here in prayer, seeking a cure for an illness or pain that had caused her problems for a while. Over time, it's clear that Catherine must have realised that she was not going to recover, 
and that she was going to succumb to whatever was plaguing her health. Three days before her death, she made her will, but what specifically killed her? Shortly before her death, she had given birth again, and it's known that she had many children, at least six of them. This could have took a great toll on her body. Some sources claim that what may have killed Catherine of Valois was breast cancer, which during the 15th century there was completely no cure for at all, and once this was detected, it would quickly have swept through her body. She was not an old lady either, as she died on the 3rd of January 1437 at just the age of 35, which was not considered elderly at all during this time. But other sources claim that following giving birth, she grew ill and things got worse as she found herself separated from her husband and her children while she spent time in prayer at Bermondsey Abbey. It's likely that she may also have been ill from childbirth, as at the time it was incredibly dangerous for a woman to give birth. This could lead to many different complications and illnesses such as childbed fever, and this could lead to someone dying weeks after giving birth. At the time also, around cities such as London, many different diseases and illnesses would cause chaos with people regularly getting sick to the point where they would not recover. For example, if the plague was going around, frequently the monarchy would leave London and cities for quieter, less populated areas. But as mentioned, Catherine of Valois did die on the 3rd of January 1437. After, her husband would be arrested for violating the laws of marrying the Queen Dowager. Despite the previous king, Henry V, her husband being dead a number of years, Catherine was given a large funeral befitting her status as a queen, despite her scandalous marriage to Owen Tudor. After her death, she was embalmed and her internal organs were removed to prevent decay, and then her cavity was stuffed with herbs and spices. Her body was then wrapped in cerecloth, and it was then encased in lead and placed inside of a wooden coffin. These organs that were removed, it's presumed, were buried in separate locations, often where the funeral procession stopped at different churches, but it's not known where Catherine of Valois' remains were buried. Her funeral procession did stop at St Catherine's Church, and her organs may have been interred here. But then her funeral procession, which was adorned with an effigy of her dressed in her clothes, passed towards Westminster Abbey. The coffin was covered in cloth of gold and she was later given a second funeral service and as laid to rest initially in a tomb near her first husband, Henry V. However, her grandson, Henry VII, decided to later demolish the old lady chapel where Catherine had been buried and her tomb was destroyed in the process and it's believed Henry VII may have done this to distance himself from claims of illegitimacy from his ancestors. Her outer coffin was decayed, and Catherine's remains were taken out of it and from the inner lead coffin and were then placed into a wooden chest. Over the years, this chest would be opened and her remains would be kissed, touched, and so on by members of the public, but it's believed that Henry VII never gave instructions as to rebury Catherine of Valois, and it wouldn't be until the 1800s that her body was placed back inside of a tomb befitting her status, and away from the eyes and hands of the public. When Catherine's body was finally buried for the last time, an eyewitness stated, It was a striking and impressive scene, which I shall ever remember, and which at the time it was impossible to view without some feeling of emotion. The daylight had quite faded, and we were alone in the darkened abbey. Two workmen took up the box containing the Queen's remains, and followed Mr. Poole and the clerk of the works, the latter carrying in his hand one small lantern to light us, led the way out of St. Nicholas's Chapel to the north side of the Chantry Chapel. Mr. George Scarf and myself followed. No one else was present, and we seemed unconsciously and silently to fall into a sort of processional order. I remarked to him, we are attending the Queen's third funeral. Not a word was said as we passed slowly round the ambulatory in the darkness. But despite this, and the horrific events that occurred to her body and remains after her death, it is still not entirely known what killed Catherine of Valois. It could have been the effects of giving birth, or it could have been an illness such as breast cancer that plagued her for some time as she did retire to the abbey to pray for her health and her recovery, so she could have known death was ebbing closer for her each day. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.